was awful. Oh no. Oh no. She turned her alarm go off in the middle of the night. That happened once. I just checked. I don't think it's If it goes off, you have to get full permission to leave. Good morning. Are you ready to hear? Are you ready for our worship service today? You are here on time. Good for you. Okay, let's begin. Again, good morning. There we go. <laughs> still like fall? Are you ready for winter? Still, still in fall? This weekend it's supposed to be cold. So. Got to tell you something. Soon there's going to be some white stuff on the ground. And I know we're not looking forward to shoveling. I would like summer to continue year-round, but, you know. Okay. few announcements for you this morning. First off, I know it's been touching our hearts deep. Um, the shooting in Maine happened. My friend sent me a message and um, I Googled it online and found an article. I was reading through it and it is confirmed that there is a total of four deaf individuals who did pass away during that shooting. And it hit the deaf community, you know, nationwide now. So we will have to be in prayer for them and their families during this tough season. This coming Saturday, November 4th, we will have a funeral service here for w Wilma. We need a lot of your help volunteering um, and just representing Peace Deaf Church. If you want to make a dessert, please talk with Julie. The service will start at 12 noon. Uh, social time visitation um, will start at noon, and then at 1 p.m. we will have the service here. It will last for about an hour, uh, and then t at 2 we will have refreshments in the fellowship hall. And speaking of that, Julie is also wanted me to remind you that we will need help um, for Bible study class, help cleaning up, um, and making and getting everything ready for the funeral. So if you're willing to stay after that. All right. November ooh, it's coming up fast. It's before we know it. Once we p get past Halloween, we're right into November. It feels like, where did the time go? And November 11th, we have a men's group starting. Um, we'll have a bowling activity for the men's group, and the women's uh, group has the same day in Golden Valley. Um, they'll have a restaurant and, and until hang out in the restaurant until one, maybe. Oh yeah, next week, Sunday. I want. I mean, I want to make sure you don't forget that there's a time change. I don't want you to be like me in the past and arrive at church at one uh, really early and figure out why, why is no one here? There's no one here. I missed it by an hour. Oh, no, I'm just kidding. I just want to make sure you know that there is a time change, so don't forget to change your clocks.
We have a few dates coming up. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, we have a few um, birthdays. And tomorrow, October 30th, Julie R. If you know, go ahead and email her. And wish her a happy birthday. And um, past the past Thursday, we had John. And that was his birthday. And I know, um, I know it's belated, but you can still send him an email. This Wednesday, November 1st, we have two, John K. and Paul D. You can email them too. Wish them a happy birthday. Or happy birthday if you're watching online. Um, if anybody's interested in joining the Christmas committee, there's going to be a party here happening December 16th. You can talk to Julie when she's here. She's not today. Someone reminded me that I needed to let you know that this Friday will be pickleball starting at 6.30 this Friday. And the when is the game again? Shannon says the game is the game is on the third Friday of the month at 6.30. So let's see. Okay. Counting here. So the 17th. So it starts on the 6th. The game is on the 17th. November 8th on Wednesday. Again, Julie will need your help for midweek dinner. We can clean up, washing dishes, and just general cleanup. Again, we can remind you of that next week. I guess that's all for now. Unless you have anything you want to share with congregation? Nothing? All right. Okay, now we're going to give you a few minutes to write down any prayer requests that you may have. Um, for example, the four deaf people um, who passed away in Maine, maybe the war in Ukraine, the Israel and Hamas situation. Just write down some prayer requests and drop them up here.
right, next thing we have is the offering of your love for Jesus. I want to say thank you um, and give out of our hearts. In 2 Corinthians chapter 8, verse 12, what we can give, if you want to give, will be a gift, will be accepted if you give willingly. You'll not be judged by what you have and not by what you've done. If you just give out of your heart. So we want to say thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. All right, let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are here together encountering you. And we want to say thank you for everything that you have done. You know us. You know our hearts, including the people who are watching on the live stream. Watch our th we're watching our th you watch our thoughts, you read our h hearts and our minds. We ask you to look on the hearts of the p those who have offered something in a prayer request. Maybe it's private between you and them. In the past week, a grief touched our deaf community with the shooting in Maine that has impacted the deaf community and the four people who died in their families. We pray for comfort for those families in Maine and help them find consolation during this time and grief. We pray for the Israel and Hamas war, the war in Ukraine. Seems like there is just an increase of devasta devastation all across the globe right now. And we need to look to you and focus on you. I know that you are still there and still Lord. Even though we can't see you, we know that you are real. And you can take care of the whole world. And the world might hurt us, but if we look to you, we will be healed. Father, send your Holy Spirit down on us. Down on the people who are watching online. And speak to us this morning so that we understand, but not only in our minds, but in our hearts also. Comfort the people who have lost family members, especially those who uh, lost Wilma's for this Saturday. Help us be uplifting and represent you. We thank you every day through the good and the bad. Now we are here together to learn. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Okay. Peace be with you. Know that some people today are at the Death Encountering Christ Retreat. So we want to pray for them and what's going on there. The people from all over the country come, come in together. Hope that God touches their hearts. Mm. We will pray again for them later this morning. So what's going on this Tuesday? What's happening? What's, what's special about Tuesday? Halloween, all right? Different, a lot of different ways to sign it. I like that sign. Do you have any plans to give out candy? Someone? Better to give God's word. All right, beautiful, Shannon. You guys going to dress up too? No. Any of you looking forward to the a Halloween as a holiday? Okay. All right. Good. Okay. I'm going to give you a little hint. We're getting ready for God's word. And I'm going to show you three pictures so you can figure out what the theme for today's sermon is going to be. Of course, it's not going to be the word Halloween necessarily, but I want to give you three pictures to try to guess. So what is this? Halloween clothes. All right. What else? Kids are excited. What else? Seems kids are having lots of fun. Anything else? What do you see in the picture? Excited. Yep. Candy. Maybe excited for candy. Tradition. Keeping up with the tradition. Dressed up for fun, not for Halloween. All right. Friends together, hanging out, right? Children in general, okay. So kids often will pick, you know, what they want to be. For example, one person looks like maybe wants to wanted to be a clown this year. Or pumpkin, bird. They have different costumes. You know, remember, if you think back when you were young, in your youth days, you dressed up for what you wanted to be, right? Maybe you wanted to be a football player and you had all the gear. And maybe you wanted to be part of a character, if you had a favorite character for some, from something. Okay, so hold that, hold that thought in your head, and now I'll show you the next slide. So what's this? Masks. Cover part of your face. No one's there. Okay. All right. That's fine. <laughs> you can see the eyes. All right. What else? H hidden identity. Okay. Why would you hide your identity? Why hidden identity? So this picture is showing a mask. It's not showing your true self, not showing your true identity. Like you said, it's a hidden identity. Now again, you have a character, you have an identity. So remember character and identity, keep those words. Now I wanna show you another picture, last one. Okay, you, someone said emotions, someone said a mirror, someone said reflecting on the past. 
Maybe worrying about money. Okay. Memories. All right. Looks like you found something out about themselves. Maybe they're analyzing themselves. Good one. Anything else? Maybe a family member died. Grief. Okay, good one. Maybe it's not a mirror. Maybe it's a picture and they remember when that family member was alive. It could be, but what he's looking at, because maybe you can't see, but how do you know... I guess, how do you know someone said emotions? How do you know what is true? Someone said family, someone said a mirror. There's different things that could apply. But remember, character, identity, and the third word is watching. Like, maybe your family, yourself, investigating. And it's a really simple message today focuses on all those three words but together. I'm going to tell you what. Does anyone want to guess? Who am I? Okay. See how you see yourself. Anyone else want to guess? All right. So the theme or a topic for our sermon today is we're in his image. And what does that mean? That means we represent Christ. We don't need to put a mask on. As Christian, we should show our identity in him. It should show clearly. Remember first, character. Sometimes what we will do if we, we need to think of what would we would what would we do if Jesus were here or what would Jesus do? We're not supposed to hide our identity. We're supposed to show our identity. We are his children. So we have character, identity, and then third, the emotion, yourself, your family. Someone said to analyze, investigate. Does any of your family believe in Jesus? Kind of look at, or look, look at them, look at the mirror of yourself and say, oh, my, I am awful. You know, how, how can I change to be more like God? So on Tuesday, when, with Halloween coming, there's different masks, but those aren't yourself. It doesn't feel appropriate. We are in his image. We don't need to hide that. We're going to be in Genesis chapter 1, 26 through 27. And there's two slides I'm going to sign for you here. This is Genesis is the first book, first chapter. Then God said, Now, let us make man, humans, who will be like us. They will rule over all the fish in the sea and the birds in the air. They will rule over all the large animals and all the little. Little things that crawl on the earth. So God created humans in his own image. He created them to be like himself. He created them male and female. You probably already know the Halloween first started as a Christian holiday back in the day until people adopted it and adapted it and people changed the celebration. And then how we changed the celebration, or we as Christians changed the celebration to All Saints Day for November 1st, where we honor all of those who have died and gone before us and that are with God in heaven. So, the word hollow really doesn't mean anything. It means nothing. It means empty, hollow. 
But then when you add hollow plus ween, Halloween today is celebrated where kids get dressed up in costumes. They want to be creative. They want to kind of invent themselves. But we don't need to copy someone. We shouldn't copy those false images. We need to show the correct image of his of being his children. We want people to see God when they see us. Even though there's many different faces in the crown, they're still all beautiful because we are made in God's image. God made male and female in his image. Wow. So Halloween, that oppresses that image. That's why today we don't celebrate Halloween. Back in the day, maybe 30 years ago, as a kid, I would hang out, give out candy or hand out candy. And people would show up that night, but now I keep my lights off. I want kids to know God first. As Christians in the world today, we need to show God's light clearly. It should radiate off of us. Verse 27 says, So God created, I'm sorry, verse 26. Verse 27 says, God made you in his image. We can still go up to the door, we can knock on the door, we can talk to people. But instead of saying trick or treat and get candy, Maybe some of you like candy. I mean, sugar, sweet tooth. I get it. That's okay. That's okay. But we need to spread the gospel too. And we are made in his image. So we need to show people. With this in mind, I have three um, verses that I have highlighted in yellow. I'll start with verse 26. And then God said, now let us make humans. That's letter A. You can see it highlighted here. The word humans, the Hebrew word comes from the word man or people, such as you and I. Or the name Adam. The word Adam means earth or red clay. Interesting. It's how God uses the words in, the, in these verses. It's how he made humans. First one, of course, we know the first human was Adam. And his name means earth. The first human on earth, his name means earth. And when God spoke the word, everything was created. In seven days, made, he made it the earth, and on the seventh day, he rested. And the first day, God made darkness and light day and night. On the second day, God made the water and the land. We have dark, light, water, and earth. On the third day, plants, trees, flowers, vegetation. On the fourth day, we have morning and evening. Fifth day, animals, birds, 
big and small. But God felt that there was something missing. On the sixth day, God created, well, he wanted a relationship. So he wanted humans. So he created them in his image. He said, let us make man in our likeness. Finally, he had a relationship. On the seventh day, God rested after those six days of work. God felt something was missing when he made, had made everything. He had animals, he had plants, he had wild animals, farm animals, but he still felt something was missing. We are in his image, but imagine how God feels when people resist him. It's like, I made you, and you just don't care? You walk away? If you made something, just, just imagine with me. If you made something, and that thing was like, mm, I don't like it. For example, I don't mean, like... Like, okay, think of a skilled woodworker. There's someone here who is amazing at making things with wood. Oh, and they just, it was his best creation, best cra craftsmanship. And he gave it to me. And I said, meh, I don't like it. Now imagine how he would feel. All of those hours and hours of work and dedication and payment. And I and he asked for nothing in return. And I said, meh, 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 I don't like it. That's like God too. He created, he made, he spent hours of investment. He made humans and humans are like, meh, I don't like it. Ooh, that feels sticky. We are made in his image. We can't trick ourselves into thinking we're not. We look in the mirror and we can't fool ourselves. Fake ID or not. Fake identity or not. God made you in his image. So you are special and set apart. You are the only thing that God created in his own image. Or likeness is another word. Animals are not in God's image. Even though maybe some of you have pets. And God made our pets. But they're not in his image. They're still cute. And they still bring us joy. But humans are the only thing that God made in his image. That feels, that feels powerful. And that doesn't mean that you look like God. No. You are special to God. You are his special creation. But it doesn't mean that you are. It, it means you are his special creation. You are special to him. God wants you. God loves you. He wants you to just be yourself in his image. And I'm looking around the room and I'm seeing different faces. Men, women. And I still see God in you. You gave up your time today for worship to thank and praise God. Because he made you and those on our live stream in his image. Another good example is maybe you can compare um, if you're looking at old photographs. I know many of you might go through, look at scrapbooks and see the comparison between you and your parents. And maybe your parents at your age that you are now. And you can notice the strong similarities. Oh, I have dad's nose. I have mom's eyes. 
or maybe you tend to take after one parent or the other, right? But think about it. God made you in his image. And like you can look at pictures of your father and say, oh, I have made in my likeness of my father. I just take after him. Well, that's the same as God. He can manipulate that and change it and m figure out people to make in his own image. But how many other people could do that? <coughs> the third picture we looked at at the beginning of the man who's covering his mouth. Maybe somebody thought he was his family. But he was looking at himself and saying that, oh, it was a mirror. Maybe the ear, the nose, or the mouth, or eyes, or whatever. Could have been the same as um, members of the family that was passed on from generation to generation. But we are to be like Jesus, by, be like God. We don't need to cover it up and mask it and during Halloween. Your father still loves you no matter who you are. Maybe you're an only child, maybe you have several siblings, but you're all loved. You are his special creation, and God loves you as who you are. You are his child. You don't need to come up with another identity. On Halloween, just be yourself. Show who you are in his image. Now we'll go to the next one. B <coughs> says, who will be like us? It is something to think about. So humans, uh, hum God made humans in his image and likeness. So I want to talk about the word likeness. It means being alike. It's like a portrait. You look at a picture on something it's all about something that looks like something else who will be like us the topic of our me message who is you us is god wow god created no no one can even think about how we were made. I mean, look at us. Ears, senses, smell, sight, hearing. You can't replicate that. I mean, can anyone... So what God did, can anyone even try to come close to that? That's exactly why I'm saying thank you. Our life, our breathe, our, our breath. He just spoke the word. We will eventually know how. We can ask later in heaven. When we live with him forever. As long as we trust and hold on to that trust and keep our faith. We're like him. We were made in his image. Next, we're going to go on to C. Verse 27. So God created humans in his own image. He created them to be like himself. Male and female. Them. He created them. It means men and women too. Created them to be like himself. And I'm looking around and it doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. It doesn't matter. I see God in you. 
whenever you go out into the world, maybe you're going on a walk and you're happy and joyful, you show the light because you are an important part. You chose to believe in Jesus in your heart. Believe that he died on the cross and died for our sins. And with that, we can live with eternal, an eternal life with him. That's an important step to finally seeing God in heaven. In Genesis chapter 5, verse 1, it says, When God created man, he made him in his own likeness, in the likeness of God. Verse 2 said, he created them male and female and blessed them. So we have Genesis chapter 1, where it's talking about how we were made in his image. And then later on in Genesis, in chapter 5, it's re-emphasizing the point that we were made in his image and blessed. So again, this Tuesday, you don't need to dress up for Halloween. You don't need to be something else. Be yourself. Show the light. I'm going to show another picture. Verse 26 again. God said, let us make man in our image according to our likeness. And when I was trying to be a pastor, I saw one clue out of that verse. It said us, let us, us. How many are there when God created? What is the us? There's only one God. But we have God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. And that's what us is referring to. No, he's not saying, let me, let me. No, he's saying, let us. Jesus is there. He saw it. He saw the creation happen. And he made this beautiful earth. Again, imagine our hands. Imagine how God can hold the earth in his hand. That's how big God is. That's pretty big. I want to show you another verse that applies to this. So go to the next slide. Psalm chapter 39, verse 6 says, Our life is like an image in a mirror. We rush through life collecting things, but we don't know who will get the things, get them when we after we die. So if we're looking in a mirror, we're seeing God is there, but but we're collecting things like candy or books or words or whatever. We're, d- we're collecting things. But who takes care of that? Where does it go? It'll just dissolve. It'll fade away. But his word is permanent forever. His word will never fade away. God is forever. And Jesus said, I am the Alpha and the Omega, meaning the beginning and the end. And everything in between. We will live in him forever. That's exciting. So 
So on Tuesday, doesn't mean we have to get all creative and dress up. Just be yourself. You are made in the image of God. And that's beautiful. If you agree, say amen. Okay. So now to the fun part. A little trivia for you. Is it true or false that one of the Old Testament prophets had fire fall from heaven and consume all his enemies? True or false? How many say yes? Raise your hand. How many say false? Raise your hand. Don't know? Raise your hand. The answer is true. Four slides are pretty long. But Second King, verses 9-15, Ahaziah sent a captain and 50 men to Elijah. The captain went to Elijah. Elijah was sitting on the top of a hill. The captain said to Elijah, Man of God, the king says, Come down. Elijah answered the captain of fifty, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and destroy you and your fifty men. So fire came down from heaven and destroyed the captain and his fifty men. Ahaziah sent another captain with fifty men to Elijah. He said to Elijah, Man of God, the king says, Come down quickly. Elijah told the captain and his fifty men, If I am a man of God, let fire come down from heaven and destroy You and your fifty men. So God's fire came down from heaven and destroyed the captain and his fifty men. So Ahaziah again sent a third captain with fifty men. The third captain came to Elijah. He fell down on his knees and begged Elijah, saying to him, Man of God, I ask you, please, let my life and the lives of your fifty servants be valuable to you. Fire came down from heaven and destroyed the first two captains and their fifty men. But now have mercy and let us live. The Lord's angel said to Elijah, Go with the captain. Don't be afraid of him. So Elijah went with the captain to see King Ahaziah. Wow. Word changed the way. So the next question. Is it true or false that Paul is the author of the words, With God all things are possible? How many say true? How many say false? How many are uncertain? The answer is false. It was not Paul, but Christ who said that. In Mark chapter 10, verse 26 to 27, the followers, followers were even more amazed and said to each other, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, That is something people cannot do, but God can. He can do anything. All right, next, third and last question. Is it true or false that Christ's greatest miracle was, ra was raising of Lazarus from the dead? How many say true? How many say false? How many are unsure? And the answer is false. The greatest miracle 
was his own resurrection. In John chapter 11, verse 25. All right, I have a few cute pictures. I want to see your smile on the way home and whatever you're doing afterwards. All right, first one. So, you know, Halloween, the holiday. And then November, we have Thanksgiving, right? So, let's look at the pictures. Maybe you eat pizza more than turkey or candy, huh? Someone does. I I see you. All right. And the next the next one, please don't do in church. You'll you'll see why. So you know, a greet as a greeter, please don't get a fake hand. And then the hand just pops off and falls on the ground. Someone's gonna get shocked and pass out. I better take that back to the Halloween story. So, so maybe don't do that. Give some, give someone a heart attack. We don't want to do that. All right, one more, one more picture. You know, typically, everyone's sick of summer. Um, construction season and and now we're look forward to getting everything taken care of so we can drive and I I was kind of confused when I saw one picture so I'll I'll just show it to you here hmm mm hmm guess I didn't move that car Didn't tell it. Just kept it there. Worked around it. Good enough job. I see the word up in the corner. It says, why? You, said, you think God made that? Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Anyone want to volunteer to lead the Lord's Prayer? Okay. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Thank you, Shannon. All right, next. I have a blessing for you. May God go before you and guide you. May he go behind you to encourage you. With you to be a friend to you above you to watch over you, and within you to give you peace. All right. Please join me in a closing prayer. Our Father, thank you for the message that you have taught us today, that you, we are made in your image, in your likeness. You want us to be like you. Whatever, regardless of what Halloween says, dressing up, coming up with costumes, no, you want us to be like you. You love us. That means a lot to us. We pray that you would keep us safe. We are all praying here together 
for the people who are coming to learn at the Deaf Encountering Christ Retreat. Bring them safely home. Keep that fire burning in their hearts with your word. And we still pray for comfort for the family of those who have passed away in Maine and the family who will be here for the funeral on Saturday in Ukraine and Israel, all the different devastation around the world. And we need people to look up and look to you. We need you badly in our lives. And we know that you can live in our hearts through the good and the bad, that you are still good. Thank you for the interpreters. Thank you for the people who are coming to worship today. Thank you for the people who are watching online. We pray that according to your timing, you would answer these prayers and the prayers of people's thoughts and hearts. Pray for those who are sick, people who had COVID and couldn't come. Pray for healing and all the different prayers, even people who are working today and couldn't come. There's a whole list of things that we could pray about, but you know all of them, and, the, and you will answer in your time. It's in your heavenly time, in your will. We obsess over time, but you, you see everything, and you know everything. Thank you for your word. Until we meet again next week, keep us all safe to come and learn more from the Bible. And speak to us as we read through our Bibles. And so people can see who you are. Thank you for sharing with us and making us in your likeness. Whatever we look like, we are still made in your likeness. Thank you for everything, especially the Bible and these Christians. Maybe people who are uncertain yet, touch their hearts so that they will repent. And keep everyone focused on you. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.